God be with you. Let us pray. God of all mercy, you love all that you have made. You forgive the sins of all who are truly sorry. Create and make in us clean hearts that we, humbly confessing our sins and knowing our brokenness, may receive forgiveness and blessing through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Prophet Joel. Blow the trumpet in Zion. Sound the alarm on my holy mountain. Let all the inhabitants of the land tremble, for the day of the Lord is coming. It is near, a day of darkness and gloom, a day of clouds and thick darkness. Like blackness spread upon the mountains, a great and powerful army comes. Their like has never been from of old, nor will be again after them in ages to come. Yet even now, says the Lord, return to me with all your heart, with fasting, with weeping and with mourning. Rend your hearts and not your clothing. Return to the Lord your God, for he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and bounding in steadfast love, and relents from punishing. Who knows whether he will not turn and relent and leave a blessing behind him, a grain of offering and a drink offering for the Lord your God. Blow the trumpet in Zion, sanctify at fast, call a solemn assembly, gather the people, sanctify the congregation, assemble the aged, gather the children, even infants at the breast. Let the bridegroom leave his room and the bride her canopy. Between the vestibule and the altar, let the priests, the ministers of the Lord, weep. Let them say, Spare your people, O Lord, and do not make your heritage a mockery, a byword among the nations. Why should it be said among the peoples, Where is their God? Hear what the Spirit is saying to the churches. Thanks be to God. Let us read Psalm 103 responsibly. Hallelujah! How good it is to sing praises to our God. How pleasant it is to honor him with praise. The Lord is full of compassion and mercy, slow to anger and great kindness. He will not always accuse us, nor keep his anger forever. He has not dealt with us according to our sons, for as the heavens are high above the earth, so is his mercy great upon those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, as a father cares for his children, so does the Lord care for those who fear him. For he himself knows whereof we are made. A reading from Paul's first letter to the church in Corinth. We entreat you on behalf of Christ, be reconciled to God. For our sake, he made him to be sin who knew no sin, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. As we work together with him, we urge you also not to accept the grace of God in vain. For he says, at an acceptable time, I have listened to you, and on a day of salvation, I have helped you. See now is the acceptable time. See now is the day of salvation. We are putting no obstacle in anyone's way so that no fault may be found with our ministry. But as servants of God, we have commended ourselves in every way, through great endurance, in afflictions, hardships, calamities, beatings, imprisonments, riots, labors, sleepless nights, hunger, by purity, knowledge, patience, kindness, holiness of spirit, 
genuine love, truth speech, and the power of God with the weapons of righteousness for the right hand and for the left, in honor and dishonor, in ill repute and good repute. We are treated as impostors and yet are true, as unknown and yet are well known, as dying and see we are alive, as punished and yet not killed, as sorrowful yet always rejoicing, as poor, yet making many rich, as having nothing, and yet possessing everything. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks be to God. Let us read Canticle 14 responsively. O Lord and Ruler, of the host of heaven, God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and all our righteous offspring. You made the heavens and the earth, all in your vast array. All things quake with fear at your presence, you. tremble because of your power. But your merciful promise is beyond all measures, it surpasses all that are meant to the O oh Lord, you are full of compassion, long-suffering and abounding in mercy. You hold back your hand. You do not passion as we deserve. In your great goodness, Lord, you have promised forgiveness to sinners. They may repent of their sins and be saved. And now, O oh Lord, I bend the knee of my heart and make me appeal sure of gracious goodness. I have sinned, O oh Lord, I have sinned, and I know my weakness only to well. Therefore, I make this prayer to you. Forgive me, Lord, forgive me. Do not let me perish in my sin, or condemn me to depths of earth. For you, O oh Lord, are the God of those who repent, and in me you will show forth your goodness. Unworthy as I am, you will save me in accordance with your great mercy, and I will praise you without ceasing all days of my life. For all the powers of heaven sing your praises, and yours in the glory of ages of ages. Amen. The Holy Gospel of our Savior Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus said, beware of practicing your piety before others in order to be seen by them. For then you have no reward from your Father in heaven. So whenever you give alms, do not sound the trumpet before you as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets so that they may be praised by others. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward. But when you give alms, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing, so that your alms may be done in secret, and your Father who sees in secret will reward you. And when you pray, do not be like the hypocrites, for they love to stand and pray in the synagogues and at the street corners, so that they may be seen by others. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward. But whenever you pray, go into your room and shut the door and pray to your Father who is in secret, and your Father who sees in secret will reward you. And whenever you fast, do not look dismal like the hypocrites, for they disfigure their faces so as to show others that they are fasting. Truly I tell you, they have received their reward. But when you fast, Put oil on your head and wash your face so that your fasting may, not, may be seen not by others, but by your Father who is in secret. And your Father, who sees in secret, will reward you. Do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth where moth and rust consume and where thieves break in and steal. But store up for yourselves treasures in heaven. Where neither moth nor rust consumes, and where thieves do not break in and steal. 
For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. The Gospel of our Savior. Praise Praise to you, Lord Christ. I preach these words to you in the name of God, Creator, Redeemer, Sustainer. From the Collect. God of all mercy, you love all that you have made. You forgive the sins of all who are truly sorry. And that, in a nutshell, is Ash Wednesday. Truly sorry, mercy, love, forgiveness. So that's why we come to church on Ash Wednesday. We come to find a way to say to God that we are truly sorry. We also come to confront our mortality. We get an opportunity to stare sin and death in the face and to admit that both are very, very real with profound consequences on our life. We recommit to confessing our sins and to professing our need for forgiveness. And a symbol of all of that is we willingly come forward, we mark our foreheads, with the sign of the cross in ashes, as the words are spoken over us, remember that you are dust, and to dust you shall return. But that's not the story of the good news gospel of Ash Wednesday. The story does not stop there. Because what we also know is by making those ashes in the sign of the cross, We know that Jesus on the cross defeated Satan, sin, and death. And we know that in the end, those have no power, no dominion, no authority, no control over us. But we still must deal with truly sorry. And you know what? As Anglicans, we're kind of funny people. You bring up sin in the context of an Anglican gathering, and we don't talk about it too much. And when we do, it can get a little awkward. The mere mention of sin can put us on the defensive. The mere discussion of it can put it on the dismissive. When we are defensive, we disregard it. When we are dismissive, we refuse to confront it. But here we are at Ash Wednesday, and the chief thing we talk about through this entire liturgy is sin and forgiveness. Sin is responded to by Jesus who said this very early in the Gospel of Mark. Now after John was arrested, Jesus came to Galilee proclaiming the good news of God and saying, The time is fulfilled. The reign of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news. Now there's a couple critical words in there for us to know. First off, this word repent comes from the Greek word metanoia. It's a very simple word. Turn away, turn around, turn back, return. Turn away from sin, turn back to God. The Greek word for sin is hamartia. It's an athletic term. It relates to an archer or a lancer or something like that. It had a target. And they're shooting at the target, but they hamartia. They miss the mark. They fall short or they get distracted or diverted. Metanoia, hamartia. The point is, is that we are created good. That's what we have to recognize when we talk about sin. We're created good. That's what creation says over and over again. But something happens. Something goes amiss. Something damages in what we do or in what we are. Hamartia, we we miss the mark. But because, as Jesus says, the reign of God is near us, we're called to metanoia. We're called to turn away from the things that distract us from God and to return and turn back. To what? We're told to believe in the good news of the gospel. What does that mean? That means that we can be restored. That 
the damage that our sin has done to ourselves and to others can be undone. We can confess and we can seek forgiveness. You see, sin and damage, they're not our nature. We're created good, says creation. And sin and damage do not need to be our fate. We're given the opportunity to repent and believe in the good news of the gospel. Or as Paul in that magnificent lesson from Corinthians said, we entreat you, invite you, implore you, admonish you, whatever word you want to put there, on behalf of Christ, be reconciled to God. For our sake, God made Jesus to be sin who knew no sin, so that in Jesus, we might become the righteousness of God. Just listen to that. Jesus, who was not sin and who was not damaged, who never caused sin or caused damage, will take upon himself our sin, our damage. So we can, through Christ, be reconciled to God, that we can, through Christ, become the righteousness of God. And remember, righteousness is just a big, fancy, biblical word for right standing. So what that means is when God gazes upon us, does not see the muck and the junk, but sees Jesus standing beside us saying, I've got that covered. This person was bought with a price with me on the cross. They're reconciled to you, God, through me. And then what we do is perpetually return to that recognize when we fall short of the mark. Metanoia, return and turn back. So here we are at Ash Wednesday, reminded of some critical things. We're human. We're going to die. We're sinners. We've caused damage. But we also remember the good news, that there's reconciliation with God through Jesus the Christ, that there is healing of sin and damage, through Jesus the Christ. We're sinners. So be it. But we have sozo, the Greek word for salvation. We have sozo, the Greek word for healing of sin through Jesus Christ. We have been given the ability to metanoia, to turn back, to turn away from sin, and to turn to God. We have been given the grace of God in Jesus the Christ to accept God's healing of our sin and damage. And we are invited to enter in to the abundant life of God. My brothers and sisters, Lent begins today. And it's a terrible risk what we do today to deal with the sin and damage we have caused and are causing, to really look into our lives. Some of you notice that when I read the gospel, I mark the book and then forehead, lips, and heart, thoughts, speech, affections. To really look at those, to admit our sins of disappointment, our lack of faith, our fear of death, our hopelessness at times. These are all secret, secret things. I don't know about you, but I tend to hide them away. I'm ashamed to admit I live by shame. I have fear, so I hide from others. I have guilt, so I hide it from myself. But in today's Gospels, Jesus speaks to our shame and to our fear and to our guilt. He says very plainly, whenever you pray, pray to your Father who is in secret, and your Father who sees in secret will reward you. The good news of today is that our Father beckons us through prayer to be reconciled to God. So the invitation of today is turn around. Take up the Lenten disciplines to confront sin and damage. Re-engage with the joy and renewal of the word and sacraments. Practice prayer, fasting, and self-denial. Ask ourselves, you know, what are the habits we just can't kick that we're most ashamed of? What are the qualities about ourselves that we detest the most? 
what have we done or what are those do-over moments that we most regret? And then we remember the good news of the gospel. We remember that we worship a God of all mercy who loves all that God made, who forgives the sins of all who are truly sorry. We remember that God is for us, that God is with us, and that God loves us desperately. I have preached these words to you in the name of God, creator, redeemer, sustainer. Amen. Dear people of God, the first Christians observed with great devotion the days of our Lord's passion and resurrection, and it became the custom of the church to prepare for them by a season of penitence and fasting. This season of Lent provided a time in which converts to the faith were prepared for baptism. It was also a time when those who, because of notorious sin, had been separated from the body of the faithful, were reconciled by penitence and forgiveness and restored to the fellowship of the church. Thereby, the whole congregation was put in mind of the message of pardon and absolution set forth in the gospel of our Savior, and of the need which all Christians continually have to renew their repentance and faith. I invite you, therefore, in the name of the church, to the observance of a holy Lent. By self-examination and repentance, by prayer and fasting and self-denial, and by reading and meditating on God's holy word. And to make a right beginning of repentance and as a mark of our mortal nature, let us now, down, now bow down before the Savior, our Maker and Redeemer. Almighty God, you have created us out of the dust of the earth, Grant that these ashes may be to us a sign of our mortality and penitence, that we may remember that it is only by your gracious gift that we are given everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Savior. Amen. Remember that you are dust, and to dust you shall return. Remember that you are dust, and to dust you shall return. Remember that you are dust, and to dust you shall return. Remember that you are dust, and to dust you shall return. Remember that you are dust, and to dust you shall return. Remember that you are dust, and to dust you shall return. Remember that you are dust, and to dust you shall return. Let us read Psalm 51 responsively. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your loving kindness. In your great compassion blot out my offenses. Wash me through and through from my wickedness and cleanse me from my sin. For I know my transgressions, and my sin is ever before me. Against you only have I sinned, and done what is evil in your sight. And so you are justified when you speak, and upright in your judgment. Indeed, I have been wicked from my birth, a sinner from my mother's womb. For behold, you look for truth deep within me, and will make me understand wisdom secretly. Purge me from my sin, and I shall be pure. Wash me, and I shall be clean indeed. 
Make me hear of joy and gladness, that the body you have broken may rejoice. Hide your face from my sins and blot out all my iniquities. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from your presence and take not your Holy Spirit from me. Give me the joy of your saving help again and sustain me with your bountiful spirit. I shall teach your ways to the wicked, and sinners shall return to you. Deliver me from death, O God, and my tongue shall sing of your righteousness, O God of my salvation. Open my lips, O Lord, and my mouth shall proclaim your praise. Had you desired it, I would have offered sacrifice, but you take no delight in burnt offerings. The sacrifice of God is a troubled spirit. A broken and hunted heart, O God, you will not despise. Together, most merciful God, we confess to you and to one another and to the whole communion of saints in heaven and on earth that we have sinned by our own fault in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart and mind and strength, we have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We have not forgiven others as we have been forgiven. Have mercy on us, Savior. We have been deaf to your call to serve as Christ served us. We have not been true to the mind of Christ. We have grieved your Holy Spirit. Have mercy on us, Savior. We confess to you, Lord, all our past unfaithfulness the pride, hypocrisy, and impatience of our lives, we confess to you, Savior, our self-indulgent appetites and ways, and our exploitation of other people, we confess to you, Savior, our anger at our own frustration, and our envy of those more fortunate than ourselves, we confess to you, Savior, our intemperate love of worldly goods and comforts, and our dishonesty in daily life and work. We confess to you, Savior, our negligence in prayer and worship, and our failure to commend the faith that is in us. We confess to you, Savior, accept our repentance, Lord, for the wrongs we have done, for our blindness to human need and suffering, and our indifference to injustice and cruelty. Accept our repentance, Savior, for false judgments, for uncharitable thoughts toward our neighbors and for our prejudice and contempt towards those who differ from us. Accept our repentance, Savior. For our waste and pollution of your creation and our lack of concern for those who come after us. Accept our repentance, Savior. Restore us, good Lord, and let your anger depart from us. Favorably hear us, for your mercy is great. Accomplish in us the work of your salvation, that we may show forth your glory in the world. By the cross and passion of your Son, our Savior, bring us with all your saints to the joy of his resurrection. Almighty God, the Father of our Savior, Jesus Christ, who desires not the death of sinners, but rather that they may turn from their wickedness and live has given power and commandment to the church's ministers to declare and pronounce to your people, being penitent, the absolution and remission of their sins. God pardons and absolves all those who truly repent and with sincere hearts believe God's holy gospel. Therefore, we ask God to grant us true repentance and the Holy Spirit that those things may please God which we do on this day and the rest of our life hereafter may be pure and holy, so that at the last we may come to God's eternal joy. Through Jesus Christ our Savior. Amen. The peace of Christ be always with you and also with you. For these and all God's gifts, may God's holy name be praised. God be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts.
Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. It is truly right and a good and joyful to give you thanks, all holy God, source of life and fountain of mercy. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior, who was tempted in every way as we are, yet did not sin, by his grace we are able to triumph over every evil and to live no longer for ourselves alone, but for him who died for us and rose again. Therefore, joining with angels and archangels and with the faithful of every generation, we lift our voices with all creation as we sing. Blessed are you, gracious God, creator of the universe and giver of life. You formed us in your own image and called us to dwell in your infinite love. You gave the world into our care that we might be your faithful stewards and show forth your bountiful grace. But we failed to honor your image in one another and in ourselves. We would not see your goodness in the world around us. And so we violated your creation, abused one another, and rejected your love. Yet you never ceased to care for us and prepared the way of salvation for all people. Through Abraham and Sarah, you called us into covenant with you. You delivered us from slavery, sustained us in the wilderness, and raised up prophets to renew your promise of salvation. Then in the fullness of time, you sent your eternal word, made mortal flesh in Jesus, Born into the human family, and dwelling among us, he revealed your glory. Giving himself freely to death on the cross, he triumphed over evil, opening the way of freedom and life. On the night before he died for us, our Savior Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his friends and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. As supper was ending, Jesus took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is poured out for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Remembering his death and resurrection, we now present to you from your creation this bread and this wine. By your Holy Spirit, May they be for us the body and blood of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Grant that we, who share these gifts, may be filled with the Holy Spirit and live as Christ's body in the world. Bring us into the everlasting heritage of your daughters and sons, that with Mary Magdalene and all your saints, past, present, and yet to come, may praise your name forever through Christ, and with Christ, and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, to you be honor, glory, and praise forever and ever. Amen. As our Savior Christ has taught us, we now pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen.
Jesus, Lamb of God, have mercy on us. Jesus, bearer of our sins, have mercy on us. Jesus, redeemer of the world, give us peace. We do not presume to come to your table, merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in your manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under your table. But you are the same Lord whose nature is always to have mercy. Grant us, therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of your dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that we may evermore dwell in him and he in us. Amen. The gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you, and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The blood of Christ, the cup of salvation. Let us pray together. Loving God, we give you thanks for restoring us in your image and nourishing us with spiritual food in the sacrament of Christ's body and blood. Now send us forth a people forgiven, healed, renewed, that we may proclaim your love to the world and continue in the risen life of Christ our Savior. Amen. We bow down before the Lord. Grant, most merciful Lord, to your faithful people pardon and peace, that we may be cleansed from all our sins and serve you with a quiet mind, through Christ our Savior. Amen.
Go in peace to love and serve Jesus Christ, our Savior. Thanks be to God. Have a blessed week. Thank you.